Welcome to the fall 2023 semester of Applications of Deep Neural Networks at Washington University. In this video, I'm going to introduce the course. I put all of the material for this course on to the public internet on GitHub and on YouTube. So if you want to follow along with this outside of the university, you should be able to, to, to completely follow along with the course. For the students at Washington University, I'll also show you how to get into the Washington University Learning Management system to access all the assignments, submit all of your homework assignments and everything else through the website. This semester I am uh, updating this course really considerably. I really can't believe it but I have actually been teaching this course now at Washington University for seven years. So time, time certainly flies when, when you're having fun. And this whole entire time, it has been taught on TensorFlow. I am switching that over to PyTorch for, for a variety of reasons. I'll have other videos on, on that, certainly. But we're making use of PyTorch, which is one of the major deep learning platforms out there. I would say the other ones are obviously TensorFlow Keras, MXNet uh, also seems to be quite, quite popular. We're going to go through this course. This course covers... Now I'm also extending it considerably to add more aspects of generative AI. So we'll learn about all these cool images that can be created using stable diffusion and others, how you can fine tune the model so that you can create images that look very much like you. You can put your face on, on anything. We'll see how to do all of that. And we'll see basically how to build neural networks even entirely from scratch in PyTorch will be the, the language we use there. And then we'll also make use of reinforcement learning. So those are some of the major aspects that are in this course. All of the modules for this course, and there's 13 of them, each of these, this represents one week that we would cover in the semester. And each of those modules is broken into five parts, which usually have about eight to 15 minute videos that go along with each of them. You can watch them on YouTube or university students, you'll have access to them all through Kaltura, which is fully integrated with the learning management system, Canvas. All of the code though, I keep in GitHub because GitHub is just where code belongs. It, there are capabilities in the learning management system to put notebooks on, but this GitHub is where such things belong. And you'll, you'll be able to go to my course website on GitHub. I have a link to it below, and I also have links to it all throughout the Canvas learning management system. And each of the modules will look something like this. You will land on it in GitHub, either going directly to, to the course repository or through the links in Canvas. But each of these will start out like this. You'll see part 1.1 course overview. That's what we're going to look at here. And then all the other parts. You can click on the handy hyperlinks that are here to jump to the various notebooks. Each of the parts, and there's five parts in each one, has a video that goes with it. You're right now watching this video 1.1. I update, I would say, a solid 20% of the course each semester just to incorporate new technologies. I mean, you literally blink and this stuff changes. This is a considerable retrofit because um, ChatGPT, large language models, all of that, getting those into here and also switching over to, to PyTorch. So if you're going to follow along in this course, you have a couple of options for how you're gonna actually compile and execute your Python code because this is a technical course. It's not a theory course. I will show you some of the underpinnings of these neural networks, but really my goal is to get you exposed to all of these various deep learning technologies. I'm gonna show you how you can actually run something like stable diffusion, generate images, how you can actually run, not ChatGPT locally, but how to run Alpaca using LoRa so that we can actually run it in a reasonable amount of, of memory. And then we'll see how to run the full-blown ChatGPT through, through an API. So we're gonna, 
I want you really to see how to learn to use all of these rather than, if I was gonna go heavy on theory, I would probably have you create some sort of a mini version of, of a stable diffusion or a, or a large language model. But we're, we're focusing on the application of this. And as far as how to actually execute this code, because you will need to execute code to complete this course, to finish the assignments, how you can do that several ways. The easiest, and by easiest I mean no disrespect, would be to use Google Colab. You will see me as I teach the course at the campus at the university, and it's a hybrid course, so some of these sessions are pre-recorded. Some of them we will be actually at, at Washington University, and uh, some of them you'll see me here basically at, at my, home, uh, my home office. So if you just click on Colab, it'll launch Google Colab, which gives you access to a GPU. The other way, next easiest way to do it is, and this has flipped so much from how it was just a few years ago. It used to be a few years ago if you brought in a Mac. So students brought in a Macintosh, and I am, I am quite a fan of Macs. Use them often. You'd be out of luck because they just didn't... Uh, Macs don't use NVIDIA GPUs, and GPUs are important. But Macs have really leveled up, and you have the M1, M2 architecture. If you've got an M1 or an M2 Mac, you can run all of this stuff, well, 90% of this course, completely on your Macintosh. And I have a video here for installing PyTorch on a M1 Mac. Go ahead, follow through that, see, see if you can get through the first... The, the first modules, and if you if you have issues getting it running on your Mac, uh, bring your Mac to to uh, the class the first the first session. We can we can certainly take a look at that. If you have a Windows machine, that works too. And those of you at Wash U, you will see me bring this machine in the one that I am actually recording off of right now. I like this machine, it's, it's good for on, on the go, and it's my dedicated Washington University com machine. It, 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 has a G it has a GPU on it, it has everything that I really need, and I can show you kind of how this works in, in Windows as well. There's, a f there's some extra steps, certainly, to getting a GPU working on the Windows platform, but it, it's not too bad with, with PyTorch. And I, I will be adding these links for these videos prior to the, 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 first, the first class session. I'll put one for Windows there as well. I do recommend most likely you will probably use Colab. And you'll see me use Colab a lot. I'm jumping into it right now. It'll let you actually run the code. You'll see I have Colab Pro Plus. Now I have no affiliation with Google whatsoever. I mean, heck, I just dropped their, their neural network platform for, for, the, for this course. But, and Google's great. I love a lot of the Google, the Google products, but I do make use of Google Colab. You'll see that I have Pro Plus. This costs about $50 US a month. I am perfectly happy to pay that. This is kind of my deep learning on the go that I often, that I often make use of. So what, for this course, you don't need, you can use free Colab. You do not need Colab Plus, Pro Plus, or Pro. They all have their various advantages. You can go in and you can change your runtime type and they, they change this a lot. Last semester, this, this looked completely different, but now you can pick the, the GPU that you want. The A100 is the highest end GPU that they have here. There's also an H100, but that's, that's very state of the art. It'll be added here at, at some point, I have no doubt. But, and you also see the TPU. This is Google proprietary um, type of a GPU. We'll stick to the commonly available ones of the, uh, we'll use the T4 a lot. It's not an advanced GPU, but for a lot of what we do in the course, it works fine. If we're doing something higher intensity, like when we're fine tuning the neural network to, to my face or to something like that, we'll look at an, we'll look at an A100, most likely. Otherwise you're gonna be running it all night but you can certainly certainly do that. We'll also see that you can use other cloud resources for some of these some of these generative models. So we'll save that. And now that we're actually in Colab, we can run the code. When you were just looking at it in PyTorch, when you were just looking at it in GitHub before, you can't actually run the code. We'll see that in, in a moment. 
you'll always see some code at the beginning here that you should run. This is connecting you to the Google Drive. So you will use Google Drive. We do a lot of this completely in the cloud. You'll connect to, to Google Drive and then you will, you, you, can, you can store your documents there and other data. And you can see it's running, it says using Google Colab. If you run this locally on a Mac or a Windows computer, it, it does define this flag here so that we can choose what we're, what we're running. So deep learning, absolutely the four luminaries of deep learning. And there's many others, many other luminaries involved, but Yann LeKern, Jeffrey Hinton, Yashua Bengio, and Andrew Nang. The three, the three people in the dark shirts all won the Turing Prize. This is like the Nobel Prize for computer science. So it had nothing to do with the color of their shirts, I guess. That's, that's a correlation, not a causation. Uh, Andrew Nang, I mean, I've taken online courses from all of these individuals. They're all absolutely spectacular researchers and instructors. Most of them have jobs in industry, uh, as well as still maintaining their academic ties. So what is deep learning? Deep learning is neural networks, fundamentally. Machine learning in general, well, when you did traditional programming, when I started in this many, many years ago, you would take your input data that you're gonna work on, you'd write some program code, the computer would run your program, do stuff to the data, and then output it. Machine learning, you take your input data, some samples of what the output looks like, run it through the computer, and then the computer produces the, the program code, which is fundamentally a model or, or something such as that. There's really six areas of deep learning that we're going to particularly deal with in this course. I created this graphic actually probably four years ago, five years ago. So it's interesting, the weighting has changed in terms of where, I mean, generative has just exploded. ChatGPT, generative is where the computer generates data and it's, it's quite powerful. Computer vision, always a mainstay of deep learning. And we'll see numerous computer vision examples where we can detect faces, analyze faces. We'll look at some examples from research that I've conducted certainly in, in the industry. And by the way, just to introduce myself, I am a adjunct professor here at Washington University. And my main job, I'm a vice president at a large insurance company and I lead a research and data science team. But very, very technical. Don't hold the vice president title certainly against me. So we do, we'll also do tabular data. That is Microsoft Excel. Oh, and my other claim to fame, uh, YouTuber. So like and subscribe, smash the like button, all, all that YouTuber stuff, certainly for sure. Uh, but seriously, subscribing to the channel, you'll keep up with projects and other things that I, that I put out here. So tabular data also, that's things that look nice in Excel. So you've got it, several columns, you're gonna try to predict one of the columns. Tabular data often is not where neural networks particularly shine. They, they do quite well, but there's other models. XGBoost in particular is probably what you would be using for tabular data. Nonetheless, we're gonna see how to put tabular data through neural networks. Natural language, absolutely a huge, huge application of, of neural networks. ChatGPT, for example. ChatGPT is kind of the bridge between natural language and generative though. Reinforcement learning, kind of teaching the, the, the machine to play game sort of things, but most, you'll not just games, but real actual business applications, but games were one of the first things that it was demonstrated on. Time series, looking at data going through time, huge application for deep learning. Similar to tabular data, there may be other, other model types and more traditional stats that might be superior to the models that we learn in, in deep learning. Generative, absolutely, the, that is the juggernaut that has been awakened in, in deep learning. In traditional stats, you had cl regression, classification. Neural networks often combine the two. You can be regressing, you can be classifying at the same time. The data coming into a neural network and out of a neural network, that's where the real power is. Highly unstructured data. You can have text coming in, you can have images coming in. You can have other images or text coming out. You can teach neural networks, we'll see how to do this, to uh, scale up an image. And that's an image coming in, an image going, going out. Why deep learning? 
like I said, for, for the right data types, if you're not doing tabular, if most of those other, other five types up there, deep learning is going to be superior to support vector machines, random forest, gradient boosted machines, and all these other, other model types that you may have learned about in other machine learning classes. Why Python? Python has pretty much taken over the world in terms of machine learning, but I'm even seeing it now in traditional software engineering where Node.js was absolutely the force to be reckoned with just a few, a few years ago. But Python, Python is a language that has really taken the world by storm and it's what we'll be using in this course. I recommend that you are already familiar with Python. We're gonna review it in the first two modules this one included, but you, you, should have, you should have knowledge of, certainly Python absolutely helps, but other programming languages as well. If you are learning to program at the same time as learning neural networks, I guess, I guess that can work. You're certainly gonna have a lot of, a lot of catch up to, to do. So I have some code here where you can check your version of, of Python. We're gonna run this. And if you're installing this on your computer at home, not using Colab, this will be your test. So happiness is seeing target device is a GPU. Apple Metal is not detected because I'm not running on a Mac. If I was, that would be there. Uh, and that's, that's basically it. So you'll see this code at the top, not this code exactly, but detecting what type of device you are using. And mo the code should adapt to it automatically. If you run into any issues, uh, certainly post them in the GitHub repository. Um, if you find a bug, anything like that, I have rewritten 80% of this code. So you're gonna probably find a bug or two this semester. I'll level set with you right there. But let, let me know if you find something. For people just from the internet, do not post issues related to you're having, you're having problems installing PyTorch or getting the GPU running on your local computer. I, I simply just don't have the time to do one-on-one -on -one installs. If you find a bug in my code, <laughs> let me know. I, I fix everything as, as soon as I as soon as I can find it. Students, yeah, hit me up when we're when we're in class. I'll definitely help you troubleshoot Windows, Mac, Linux. I, I work with all three quite a bit. The module one assignment applies more to to Warshu. I'll I'll take you and show you how to uh, uh, completely submit assignment one. You can certainly work on the assignments if you're completing this course through the internet. I obviously won't won't grade them or give you a grade or any sort of credit from, from Washington University. All right, that is everything. Looking forward to this semester. It's gonna be great. It's a major major reboot of the of the course. 